So if you read the title, you saw retirement in the title of this video, and yes, we have retired. We've been retired for about two months now. We also got engaged and we're shut down our production shop. That means we're setting up our shop for basically retirement. And what does that mean? That means a lot of changes. And the first thing that we did was tackle the table saw. Now I wanted a really nice setup for our retirement plans and the things that we intend on doing in the future. And today I thought I'd show you what this setup looks like. Maggie and I have been working on our table saw setup on and off for about three weeks now. And we really got it right where we like it. So this is a pretty fancy setup and obviously not everybody's gonna run out and set up their saw like this. And in some cases it may not work for what you're doing. But we thought we'd share what we've done here in hopes that it'll offer you some insight and pay possibly some tips of things that you could do with your table saw setup to make your workflow a little bit better and you know just make it a little bit easier to use. I just want to take a second before we jump into the table saw and all the things that we've done with it and address the elephant in the room. Maggie and I have retired and I know that has a lot of connotations with it and that all that means for us is that we've shut down the production side of our business. We're no longer going to work 80 to 100 hour weeks. We're going to really focus on like 40 hour weeks which may sound silly, but for us, that feels a lot like retirement. So the big CNC is up for sale and it's going. We're revamping the shop to set up for basically making videos and doing educational stuff. And um, that's what the future looks like. We'll have a whole video coming out about that real soon, about what our plans are and what ch changes will come to the channel and all the stuffs. But for now, let's jump into the table saw. Let me show you some of the really cool things that we've done with this. And hopefully it'll help you out in your workflow. So we're just going to go from left to right on the saw, and this is actually kind of unique. We put the router table on the left side of the saw instead of the right side of the saw in the orientation of looking at it you know, from the front. The reason we did that is we want to feed material all from the same direction. So if we're feeding it into our power feeder or we're feeding it into our router for molding and stuff, we want to be able to have a big batch of it right there and a catch on the outside. So the fence itself is one of the best I've ever seen. This is from Harvey. The router table is also from Harvey and the lift system is Craig. We are looking to upgrade that. This is one that we had in our production shop and we didn't mind beating it up a little bit. We'd like to put a, something pretty nice in here. But for now, this is what we're using. So what's really nice about this fence and it's probably one of the nicest, if not the nicest fence we've ever used is it comes off really easily. Just push it back and lift up and it comes right off. I don't want to have to take the dust collection on or off or have this far away from my table. So what I've done is I made it a mount system right here in front. I can just take the router fence right off the front and it drops right in here. These little catches on the both side, keeping it from sliding back and forth. And the hose stays pretty much out of my way so I can get right over the top of it and use it without the fence on. And if I'm also using the table saw, I don't want the router fence on as well. To turn the router on and off, we don't want to have to reach inside the dust collection box. So we installed a modified Craig switch right here. Now Harvey doesn't have a switch yet for their system, but they will shortly. To do that, we just drilled a couple of holes, countersunk them, and attached this switch right here. So now we have easy access to turning the system on and off. Now to make things easily accessible, we put a drawer under our homemade outfeed table. And this drawer right here has Kaizen inserts in it. We made it out of PVC and some HDP, and I'll explain that in a minute. So we can put everything that we need right in here to change our to change our sleeves, to change router bits, and we have some of our flush trim bits in here as well. The plan is to put another drawer below this with more router bits, but that will be an add-on we put on later. Now our outfeed table is 36 inches wide, and that just gives us a little bit over 48 inches from the center of the blade. So if I'm cutting a full sheet of plywood and I get just past the blade, it's not just going to fall off. <laughs> Enough weight of the material will still be on this side that it won't tilt forward and lean away. Now, obviously, we'll probably have somebody catching it if we're cutting a full sheet of plywood. But that's how we came up with the depth of the outfeed table. So we knew if we're cutting eight foot stock, it won't just fall off. It'll be balanced there so we can run around and pick it up if we're cutting by ourselves. The next thing we did was invest in a power feed system. Power feed systems can get pretty expensive, but this baby power feeder is only about 480 bucks. Now, the magnets that hold it down, these are from MagSwitch. These are fairly expensive, but the value of adding magnets instead of having it bolted to your system is I can move it anywhere I want. I can move it from the table over to the router, to a bandsaw, to different places that we would use it. So I only need the one power feeder and not three, or three of them bolted to a system. Part of our plan moving forward with retirement is doing a lot of like homesteading projects, whether that's garden boxes or building small tiny homes, which means we're gonna be cutting a lot of linear feet of material. So having a power feeder is gonna come in really handy for that. 
And that's really why we decided that we were definitely going to go ahead and invest in putting a power feeding system on our, on our table saw and other systems that we have in the shop. So to remove this system is really easy. You just pull that lever and turn off the magnets. And now the system is free to move anywhere else I want to move it to. One of the nice things about this system is it's small enough and light enough to put it up pretty easily when we're not using it. So we built this little system here on our jig wall so we can just drop it in place. In the spirit of full disclosure, the Harvey system that we have was sent to us. I reached out to them, said, hey, I love your table saws. Do you mind sending me one? And obviously I will use it in our content and share a little bit about it. And it was really the right choice. We've been very happy with this saw so far. One of the things I really like about it is it doesn't have a bunch of bells and whistles that you see on a lot of other systems. This is just a workhorse that's engineered and built really well, and we've been really happy with it so far. Now, in my last table saw, and I actually did a whole video about this, I have a miter set inset into the wing of my saw. This is the segmented miter set, and it helps me to set up any angles I need when I'm doing projects that are segmented. So in this case, I can go from four segments, which would just be a frame, all the way up to something that has 20 segments, and I don't have to do any math or any, or any calculations. This automatically does it for me. All I have to do is take my pin, put one in the zero, and let's say I wanted to do seven segments, I put the other one in the segment pin, and then I can just grab my miter gauge, drop that right in, loosen it up, run it to those two pins, make sure it's tight against there, and tighten it down, and that is the perfect angle for seven segments. Now with this compass fence, I'm able to adjust my stop system here for any length, so I can get exact same lengths, exact same angles, which leads to a very, very nice, perfect segment, and all those miters are gonna be really tight. Conversely, if I want the miter to be the other direction, I just change my pin position, and I change it to whatever segment I want, and then again, push it up nice and tight up against there, make sure it stays up and tight, nice and tight, and it's done. Now this, this is the compass miter fence and it has some stop position and detents that help you line up really good angles. It obviously doesn't have 20 positions that help you line up good angles, but it's a pretty good miter fence from what I've been able to tell. In my experience, I've never really bothered with really nice miter gauges because I always had my segmented system and I can just set up any angle I really need to it and relatively quickly. This is Harvey's miter gauge and it's actually pretty fancy. It's the fanciest one that I've ever owned. I don't know a lot about miter gauges because I've never used fancy miter gauges. I've always just used basic miter gauges and my miter set to set up the angles that I need and um, it's worked. This one has some detents on it that for setting up different angles. I haven't checked the accuracy of them yet, but it's really well built and it's pretty sturdy and I've been pretty happy with it so far. I can tell you that it goes right back to 90 pretty accurately, so I've been happy with that. I'll be playing with this more and reporting back on it down the road. If you're like me and you've worked with just regular miter gauges for a really long time and you're looking for a way to get really accurate miters, go check out the miter set. I'll put a link down in the description box below so you can see it. We've been using ours for years. We absolutely love it. Now, of course, we're not going to have a table saw without some j table saw jigs and I'm building those and we'll be talking about those in a future video. But one of the things that we definitely are going to have is a clamp on infeed table. This is one of my inventions and something that we've been producing and selling for the last couple of years. And that just clamps right on. And that gives me a little bit more extension for my, you know, cross cuts, tapering jigs, straight lining jigs. And I can switch those out really rapidly. And when I don't need it, I can just unclamp it and put it away. Now that said, we've only got maybe a hundred of those left and we're not making any more. So uh, the nice thing about that, the standard infeeds that we sell work perfectly with the Harvey saw. So if you're interested, we have a few left. And then we are looking to try and get them made in the future by another company that we're talking to. Uh, but for now, they're just not going to be available once they're gone. Now, this is right under our right side wing. And this, this gives us a place to put some extra blades, our dado stack, a feather board, the wrench that we use for loosening blades up, and a few other things. That's been really handy. Now, we do have some Kaizen foam right here with some of the systems that we use quite a bit on the table saw as well. But keeping those things really accessible makes it super easy. Maggie's in the background, isn't she? <laughs> yeah. It just makes it really super easy to use a saw and go really quickly when we need to do a changeover or access some of those things that we would need. We don't have to go hunting for them. Now these drawer systems are really simple. This is half inch PVC, half inch plywood would work just as well. Um, and then we've got soft closed drawer slides on them and a little L-frame down, uh, hanging down underneath the table to mount the whole system to. The inside is made out of Kaizen foam and we order this stuff from Kaizen Source. 
You can literally just get online, tell them what size you need, they cut it out and send it to you. And then you can cut in all your tools or things that you want in that particular drawer, which keeps them very organized. It also keeps them from getting cluttered. And we all know that when you've got drawers, you're gonna end up dealing with clutter. This just makes it super nice and clean and you know if something's missing right away. And absolutely love this whole setup on the table saw, having the drawers there with the things that we need directly next to the stuff that we're using all the time. So this is our retirement table saw setup. We're gonna be adding a couple things to this and I'll be sure to share that as we do. Obviously we've got some jigs to build for this system. We'll do a whole video about the jigs that we build for the table saw. And we'll be talking more about our retirement in an upcoming retirement video. So we'll go into depth what we're doing, what we're up to and what that future looks like for us and this channel. But for the meantime, I really appreciate you watching. I hope you found something useful in this build system that you can incorporate into your own systems to make life just a little bit easier for you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.